Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our next major conversation takes us to Kaduna State, where we're speaking this morning with Reverend Tunde Additional, who is a victim of a demolition by the Kaduna State government that they have said is unlawful, uh, seeing that uh, hundreds have now become displaced, um, even if uh, a lot of these persons have CFOs that were given to them by the same Kaduna State government um, on land and property that were you know, purchased from the government. Uh, good morning, Reverend Additional. Thanks for joining us. Reverend Tunde Additional, can you hear me this morning? Yes, yes, I'm with you. Thanks for joining us. All right, so welcome, and, and can, let's start with you giving us a breakdown of what exactly has happened to yourself and others in Kaduna State uh, that have been affected by this demolition. Yes, my our properties there in Graceland was uh, demolished on the 3rd of October 2021. Okay, what is the background be before the demolition? Was there a warning? Is there something that uh, uh, made the government go ahead with the demolition? Well, the background information that must need be known <coughs> is that uh, if a host of us came into that environment as far back uh, 1996-97, and uh, we met with the original owners of the land. Uh, they collected our monies, allotted the land to us. They gave us receipts. And uh, we followed the normal procedure. We went to the city key of the environment. Uh, he signed our papers. And uh, the district head also signed the papers. And uh, when it was time for us to build, we took our drawings to Kasuda. And uh, Kasuda gave us the right to build our properties. Now, when in, in the process of time, there was a need for us to also get the, the CFO. Our papers were first taken to the local government. The local government gave us the local government CFO, which we invariably took to the state, and the state gave to some of us the certificate of occupancy. If I might date uh, about four years ago, 2nd October, uh, 2017, as signed by the state government. Okay, so, so we we had had some uh, challenges with the, with Kasuda for some time. Uh, one year they came and said we had uh, trespassed into aviation land. Uh, during the days of the late Emma, we went through and uh, the uh, aviation authorities were brought in. Uh, the long and short of it was that they were able to uh, see their own beacons and they understood that they were the ones that were even trying to shop into our land. So by the time they got to know their, their own demarcation and where their land actually stopped, they now had to build their fence. So after building the fence, they still made some troubles. And uh, in, uh, eventually the EMEA pacified with a very strong uh, power delegation brought in to mediate. So after the whole, uh, the long and short of it, the, we in the community now decided, let's go to court so that the court can arbitrate finally. So by the time we went to the court, we had uh, a, the court judgment that took a that never to enter into our environment to terrorize or trouble us anymore. Because we are bona fide owners of the land and uh, whatever we needed to have been correctly done. Now, uh, we also had uh, two rulings or two judgments uh, against um, aviation, telling them that they do not have any land that extends into our land. So, but unfortunately, this year, we just woke up, I think uh, during the 1st October break into the 2nd of October, uh, we're just told that uh, there's a 24-hour 
um, uh, ultimatum given to those of us that are uh, uh, in, 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 in Graceland to vacate or we risk demolition. We thought it was a joke until we saw bulldozers, uh, you know, coming to our, uh, our boundary. And by Sunday evening, we saw uh, uh, some armed men, some of these, uh, uh, I think, captives or so, the vigilantes, who came in at about 8, 8 15 in the night. When after uh, Nepal had taken their lives, they brought the whole environment under siege, and the armed policemen came in, and uh, we were all driven into our homes. And uh, before we knew what was happening, there it was the demolition exercise started. Demolition, so it was, uh, demolition a started that at 8 p.m. That uh, we thought, ah, even if uh, we, we are operating in the place illegally, and we expected that Kasuda should have at least given to us maybe a month or six months or probably a year, and let's relocate to somewhere better. But for to live 24 hours on a local radio, I mean, and uh, subsequently that was all we, we got. I think it wasn't so uh, proper for, I mean, a people like us who had followed the due process and were given all the legal papers and uh, so that's the background and that's where we found ourselves and uh, we had to become homeless, uh, about, I think about 160 houses according to the report we had that was demolished. So what is the, I'd like to find out what the state government's response is to all of this now. Pardon? What is the state government's response to this situation? Well, we've not had anything yet from the, the state uh, government, except for the aviation that went from air, thanking the state government for collecting their land for them uh, from us. What, what I'm trying to find out, um, um, Reverend Adeshino, does the yes. state, the Kaduna state government claim that any of those court rulings were in its favor? Or does the Kaduna state government, is the Kaduna state government not aware of the court rulings that grant, that gave, um, you know, judge, a ruling in your favor, in the favor of the, of the people who purchased land in Graceland? Sorry, I can't hear you very well. I'm asking... Is the Kaduna state government not aware of the court rulings in your favor? I wouldn't know, but they were there. Kasuda was uh, appropriately served. And uh, over time, we had brought in even the zonal manager uh, that was on seat at one time, and we gave him copies of those uh, judgments. And so. On the 3rd of October, at 8 p.m., a demolition started. Yes, at about 8, 8.15 in the night. So, so how have, how have uh, you know, yourself and the rest of those who had property there, what have you been doing since then? Well, we've been coming together to brainstorm and see whatever we could do, probably to seek... Uh, uh, how the states could come to probably redress what has happened if uh, they will give us a listening ear. Okay, so um, however, uh, is there any hope that, you know, government would make some kind of provision for uh, the persons who have been displaced? Because I'm still trying to understand if you say you have the certificate of occupancy. I'm wondering uh, why, you know, that demolition actually took place. We, one wouldn't know the reasons for which they did what they have done, but then virtually uh, a, a host of us do have our papers. Yeah, is, is there any talk about compensating you for for your land or for your property that was demolished? Pardon me. Is there any talk about compensating you for your land or your property that was demolished? Well, like I did say, the, the government has not actually come up to tell us whether they want to compensate or they will not compensate. 
So we're just uh, at the mercy of the state government right now. So where, where are all these people currently living? Did they have, uh, uh, did some of these people live in Graceland before the demolition? And where have they all moved to? Sorry? I'm asking about where the, the people whose homes were demolished, where have they now moved to? Where do they currently live? Well, a few of us have had to just look for how we can uh, fix ourselves up. Some are still in the hotel rooms. Some have gone to stay with their loved ones. And uh, so that's the state of the affair right now. So it's a really, really sh shocking story. Um, can you speak a little bit more about the the aviation angle? It, it's uh, you were speaking about aviation thanking the Kaduna State Government for the land that was given to them. Is there something you know? Is there some politics being played here? Pardon me. I'm asking if you can speak a little bit more on the aviation angle. You said that the the Ministry of Aviation is thanking the state government for the land. Is there some, some behind-the-scenes politics being played here? Well, honestly, we wouldn't really know the, the, where this, uh, the whole thing stemmed from because it took us unawares. And uh, if it's a thing one has prepared for, probably one would have been able to find out what actually led to all of this. Okay, all right. Um, Reverend Tunde Additional, uh, we, of yes. course, are really sorry about what has happened to you and to all the you know, your many 100 plus families. Um, we hope that we can keep the conversation going until there's better, you know, uh, clarity and the Kaduna State Government does step in and, and does what is right. But for now, we, of course, are sorry and we hope to speak with you again as soon as possible. Thank you very much. All right. We'll have a great day. Well, this is where we uh, we probably it's a very sad uh, situation. Oh, it's really, really sad. And, and it makes no sense, you know, that a demolition would, would, would take place at 8 p.m. You know, Absolutely another lawless. you know, usually before you know you have a demolition happening and all of that, because I've actually seen where state governors embark on all of this. The question will be because everyone has a right to own properties and all of that. Uh, so you know, the fundamental human right at this point in time is also being questioned. Yeah. Uh, did they get a court injunction to embark on that demolition? Uh, but however, from the conversation with him, it shows that there's a lot of you know clarity. There's lack of clarity as to what is really going on. The the, the state government has not responded and the fee that seem to be a little bit you know helpless at this point in time but well, let's see how all of that actually but develops if there was a court injunction you know it shouldn't take 24 hours you know a 24 hours notice before a demolition that's you know, a, that's should, exactly what yeah, i'm saying it should be months at least um and then of course i'm sure that there's also the the opportunities for them to appeal you know that injunction um or maybe have a stay of execution there's, there's so much you know that could have play, played out uh, but you don't wake up, you know, some morning, give a, you know, a 24 hours notice in some local radio, like he mentioned, and then the next night, not even in the morning, who who works at night, who who demolishes people's property at night, if not a, if not criminals, and that includes everybody who's in that government who was a part of that demolition. It's a, it's a criminal move, and that's that's the only way you can describe it. There's no way to sugarcoat it. Whether the government is aware or is not aware, it's a criminal move to wake up at 8 p.m. and go ahead with the demolition. So whether the government chooses to be a part of that criminal move, that's their, you know, problem. But it's, it's just really, really heartbreaking. Yeah, my concern is, you know, how uh, these persons who have been displaced are coping right now. Mm, yeah, it's a, it's a state that has, a, that has a, um, a lot of IDPs scattered around. Anyway, we need to wrap up. Well, that's the much we can actually, uh, you know, take at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We'll definitely come through tomorrow with, uh, you know, fresh conversation and stories. And do not forget to catch up if you uh, fail to be part of the conversation this morning. We're on Facebook and Instagram at Plus TV Africa and YouTube is at Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. Do have a great morning. I am Saudi Obama.